All right, good morning, everybody. My name's Andrew, and you're watching the Kelly's Outdoors. So, yes, it's been a while. I have actually tried to make several fishing attempts that just did not work out too terribly well. But today, we're going to the coast. We're going to see what we can do. I'm carrying spear fishing gear, rods and reels. I don't really care what we get into, but we're going after some fish. Stay tuned. I'm itching to get in. I have yet to spearfish this year, and that's something that I typically always start doing in March, so I'm way behind. I've seen a few fish that I think are mullet, not really my targeted species, but uh, we're gonna jump in, see if we can see something else. I'm gonna freeze, it's cold, trust me. How's it going? I'm bringing home the bacon. Yeah. Another mullet. Like a sheep's head, yeah. Good job. I only had some sheep head show up, huh? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
whoo, well I'm out and I'm freezing. My feet are cramping. I can tell I am too fat for all my gear. I have put on way too much weight. But, uh, oh, that was enjoyable. That was fun. Felt so good to finally get back in the water and get some of these fish. I swam around forever, nothing, nothing, nothing. All of a sudden, a little school of mullet showed up, then some uh, sheep head. So we've got a little bit to eat in the box. I'm happy. We're gonna do a little rod and reel fishing, and I'm probably gonna jump back in later today, see if we can get some more fish. Boy, that felt good. All right, so we just made it up here to another special spot. Uh, we're kind of, you know, a couple miles offshore, I guess you'd say, in eight foot of water. And this is some spots that I have found quite a long time ago. It's pretty unusual for this area. Typically we have nothing but just grass flats everywhere. That's why I have such good trout fishing and everything else in this area. But this is pretty unique. It's hard to see down there because we've got a lot of rain here lately. It's muddied everything up. But you're seeing sand everywhere and then all the dark spots are rocks and coral. There is areas and patches out here everywhere that's full of rocks and coral. Certain times of year, black sea bass get on this, even small grouper. Uh, let's see what else. Spanish mackerel come through here. You can catch, you just never know what you might catch out here. So we're going to try it. The fish could be here, they might not. They do come in spells, they are not always on this rock. But we love checking this area out. And actually, as far as I can see that way, it's just big patches. And the black sea bass are here. Just a little too small. Get off! Oop, damn. Just got another bite. Here we go. Feels like a little guy. Another black sea bass. <laughs> That's the problem with fishing for sea bass inshore. Typically you catch the better ones offshore. So you gotta weed through a ton of little ones to find legal ones inshore. <laughs> My goodness. Three cast, three fish. Another little guy. Gotta let it get near the bottom. We're using the same bait. <laughs> really? Look at my color. <laughs> okay. You got one. Hey, that's a grouper. <laughs> oh, it is. I yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't no sea bass. That is a grouper. I did not even pay and of course, you ain't got the camera over here near you at all. Yeah, look at there. That's a gag grouper. A little juvenile. I was just telling them, too, sometimes in this spot we catch grouper, which is pretty unusual in yeah, such shallow water. Pretty decent sea bass, no? Yeah, nope. Wasn't even looking at it. Perfect sandwich size grouper. I'm just kidding, y'all. We're throwing him back. I can never get him unhooked. Oh, boy, she got him like triple hooked. There we go. That's a nice sea bass. Let me get a net. Got a chunk out of he does. That's what we want right there. That's a really nice sea bass for inshore. Yeah. That'll eat. 
He was about to be lunch for something else. Yeah, I just have to make sure that ain't a bad looking spot we don't want to eat. <laughs> yeah, something something cut him wide open. That's a really nice sea bass. Ah, don't you stick me. Yeah, something uh grabbed a hold of him and cut him up bad, but that's that's a nice sea bass for in short. We'll eat him and we'll just cut that spot out. So something got a hold of him. Real nice sea bass for inshore. Get on in there with the rest of them fish. All sea bass here. That's all right. It's catching. What is it? Easy. Is it a? Did you get another grouper? No. no. That's sea bass. That's actually a decent, decent little sea bass. It's almost what we're looking for. That one probably is legal. I think they're only going to be like 10 inches. Let's see here. Black sea bass, 10 inches. Oh, he's close, but we don't keep close. <laughs> oh, look at here. First cast since stopping. Oh, it's a good trout. Get the uh, net. Look at here. Coming on your side, babe. All right. Looks like a legal trout. If we can get him in here. Still got a little fight in him. Yes, sir. Oh, no, babe. <laughs> well, Tiffany swatting at him. This ain't a fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> we got him in the boat. That's all that matters. And he looks legal. Absolutely. Nice trout. First cast since coming into the grass flats. It's a really nice trout. All right. Go see what he is just to make sure we're legal, but there ain't no doubt this guy is legal. Oh, yeah. He is a little over 16. They ain't got to be but 15. Going home. Oh, slimy joker. Fat and healthy, too. All right. There we go. Ooh. That might have been an old pinfish, though. Not that time. Got another trout. Get the net, babe. Or right, I'll get it. You keep fishing. You <laughs> Looks like another legal trout. <laughs> Alright, come here, buddy. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure there's people watching this cringing. Man, these people with that net. <laughs> Looks like another legal one. We might need to get you over to old white pedal tail. She's like, yeah. Some time over here. Third cast, I think that was. Holy moly. Ain't no point measuring that guy. I know he is legal. If we can get him out of this old twisted up 1950s net that I have here. All right, we're getting us a good little fish box. This trout's gonna measure. We'll see. He may. He little. He is little, but he long. I don't think so. All right, be easy with it. Let me. Oh, that one is. He, huh? He got off. All right, well, this guy's touching 15, which is legal, but I don't like keeping them when they're that close. Put him back. They can shrink up on ice and in the fish box, and next thing you know, you've got you a ticket that you don't want. What is this? Oh, okay. This ain't no black sea bass, but you did get no. you a trout. Yay. 
Another beautiful little trout. Let's get him back. Well, we're back in them. Keep casting. Already had that going though. I got another one. Look at here. I mean, it's just, it's trout after trout after trout. Yeah, that one was little anyways. He wasn't gonna measure. Look at him right here. <laughs> wow, these trout are on fire. I know some of y'all are probably interested in what I'm fishing with. I will make for sure to include that down in the description. All right, so leaving biting fish is a golden rule that you do not break whenever you're fishing, but we're gonna do it. Today wasn't just about fishing. We've already had an excellent day. No doubt we could catch more, but we wanna do a little relaxing too. So we're gonna go back, do a little relaxing in a spot, and then we'll meet y'all back at the kitchen where we're gonna cook some of these up. So excuse the AC running. It's kinda of hot out here today. It's gonna to clean up one or two fish real quick. We've decided tomorrow night, which we'll include on this video, we're gonna do some fried trout sandwiches. And I haven't had fried mullet in a long time. Tastes do change. Typically, I don't like it. I'm gonna clean those mullet up too. We're gonna to fry those tomorrow night. Just didn't get enough to justify firing up the smoker. So as far as my trout goes, I just come right in behind that pet fin. Cut right up to the head and then go right down that backbone. I only stick my knife in maybe a quarter to half of an inch. All right, so just came down that backbone. Just gonna take the knife and run until I hit that center vertebrae. And then I kind of just go up and over. And then I'll lift up and over the rib cage. See? And there you go, you've got a fillet. Now you could leave that last little bit of skin attached to the uh, carcass, and it kind of helps you with filleting, but I just find that I kind of like to uh, hold it down with my, my finger. Now, trout skin isn't worth saving, in my opinion, so I just make these boneless and skinless fillets. As you can see, no meat left on that. So at this point, we'll just clean them up and get them on ice. I like to make them in good frying sizes. All right, so it's next day. I have had the fish on ice in an ice water bath overnight. I've had no issues doing that. And we have mixed up seasoned flour. Quite simple, just your typical uh, salt, pepper, garlic, and we also added blackening seasoning to this with a couple cups of flour. And a little bit of uh, baking powder. That kind of helps it rise and get a little crispier. So I'm just gonna stick these fish in here, shake it up, Y'all have all seen this before. Nothing too terribly exciting about frying fish. But when I'm trying something I haven't tried in a long time, like mullet and a fish that I don't truly care for too much, which is trout, because it's just kind of mushy, we have found that frying it kind of crisps it up and gets past that, that mushy texture. So frying is a simple and easy way to take care of fish that, uh, again, I'm kind of experimenting with and trying. I love smoked mullet but I haven't had fried mullet in years because I just didn't really care for them. All right, the wind is killing my grease. It's taking it forever to get up the temp, but I think we are finally there. Go ahead and drop a few of these mullet in and see what they do. Oh yeah. All right, that grease is getting hot now. Let's get these trout in there. All right, well here we go. Nothing fancy about fried food, but double stacked with some fried trout on there. Oh, it looks so good. 
Got the mullet with the skin on it, so we're gonna try that as well. I haven't had mullet in years, and I'm talking, I don't know, 20 plus years. Really, ago. has it been that long? It's been a long time wow. since I had fried mullet. I love smoked mullet now, don't get me wrong, but fried mullet, I always remember being kind of strong and not tasting so good. So we got a little bit of lettuce on there, some toasted buns, and Tiffany makes a homemade tartar sauce that is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Got a lot of dill in it, pickles, dill weed, everything. Mm -hmm. So good. So we'll put that on there and try it. But what I'm most curious about is mullet. Everybody's, going, everybody's already saying they need to take my country card. And then uh, one guy was saying my man card. Y'all probably <laughs> going to say that again for me not liking fried mullet and living in the South. But Well, I will tell you this, though. What I've always heard everybody, everybody say is that when you take out the brown strip out of the mullet. Mm -hmm, which I did. takes the strong taste out of it. So. Well, it's that black muddy strip. And I, I scraped it out yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's always right there. It's just the blood where, strip, yeah. I think is what it's called. No, it's kind of where their guts and everything oh, okay. is. It tastes muddy. Kind of, you know, they, they eat the mud. They eat algae everything else. And it just kind of tastes muddy like that. I did take it out. So we'll see. Um, skin's still on. So we're going to say a real quick blessing. Then we're going to try this right in front of you. Sorry to eat in front of you. Alright, I'm going to try some mullet. I already know fried trout sandwich is good, so let's see what the mullet... <laughs> Ow, it's hot! Well, I'll try the mullet with you then. Let's see what it tastes like. Lord, that is so hot. Let me try one more piece. Tastes like fried fish to me. Kind of does taste like fried fish. Now, I will say what I kind of figured. The texture is mushy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it tastes like fried fish. It's not bad at all. I don't know why I've waited so long to have it. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's just a mushy texture. People are going to kill me for saying this. I've had mud fish, and it tastes like mud fish texture. It's just mushy to me. She acts okay. a big shot. But it's not, it's not a firm fish at all. I'm kind of a texture person, I guess. But also I know that certain times of year, mullet fill out and uh, get a little more firm. These were kind of a little bit white looking. Here it is springtime. Typically later in the year is when they taste really good when they fill out with roe. Take a bite of this trout sandwich, which should be good. And we'll see if it doesn't burn the roof of my mouth off. <laughs> oh man, that looks good. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's hot. Well, I can taste the difference in the fish, but it's very good. I can definitely taste the difference in the fish. And trout's not one of my favorite fish either, but fried, it actually firms up a little and tastes perfectly fine. And again, the mullet tastes fine to me too. <laughs> it's just the texture is kind of a, uh, it's a mushy fish. At least it is to me. Bullet it, wants the taste. Yeah, bullet does. Our little dog's down here just begging for something. <laughs> now, when I smoke mullet, I can get it dry and get the texture more like I like. Like I said, I love smoke mullet. It makes excellent dip. So, hopefully, y'all enjoyed the video. It was kind of a smorgasbord of fish. We've got some put up in the freezer that we're going to cook a little bit later. We're about to go outside and enjoy this. We appreciate y'all coming along for the journey. Catch you on the next video.